Hello everyone and welcome to another Bass Singer Reaction and Analysis. Today we're going to be looking at The Greatest Showman Medley, recently came out by Voice Play featuring our dear Rachel Potter. This is exciting, you know, I, I remember watching the original movie, absolutely loved it, only seen it once, but absolutely loved the movie, loved the music in it, um, don't really remember much of the music in it, you know, I haven't gone back and binged it, and I have not watched this video yet as it just came out two days ago. What what was that? Oh, this this is the coolest sweatshirt you've ever seen in your entire life. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. This is the official "May the Base Be With You" sweatshirt that the Base Gang just dropped. Yes, our official merch is up and available, and I will include a link in the description below. So that's very exciting, and we're gonna do we're all gonna do a video while we're where we each bought we each bought some of the merch, and we're gonna do a fun video. It's like an official release, but this is like the unofficial, like, go check it out. This is an amazing sweatshirt, and it's super, super comfortable, and I haven't taken it off since it got here last night. So check that out. Guys, if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe this video. Please help me get into that algorithm. Help me grow my channel. And if you really like what I'm doing, please consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. $1. And it'll be totally worth it, and you'll get behind-the-scenes access and early access, and you'll get an invitation to my private Discord server, and we'll get to chat. And uh, it's good stuff. It's a lot of fun. I like interacting with my with my patrons. I mean, they keep the lights on. So much love to my Patreon family out there. Love you guys. And without further ado, I got my Pit Vipers ready. I got my little keyboard ready. Let's go ahead and check out Voice Plays, the greatest, the greatest showman Medley. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. Been searching in the dark, your sweat soaking through the floor. G1. G1 sub from Jeff. Also, I don't know where Marwan is. If he's watching, I know he loves these bell tones. That's Marwan's favorite thing in the world to use in his arrangements. Uh, good. Yeah, it's starting off super minimal. We got, a, we got a long way to go. I love that Jeff just opened up the can with a, just a, a beautiful, glorious G1 sub. I'm not going to I'm not gonna give our boy Jeff pit vibers in the G1. That's a little too, a little too easy for him. Uh, it is, I think it's got to be at least F1 sub, and it's got to be like exposed and super thick, thick with two C's. Let's go back and hear that sub again, though. Been searching in the dark, your sweat soaking through the floor. Buried in your bones, there's a ache that you can't ignore. Taking your breath. Still in your mind And all that was real is left behind Don't fight it, it's coming mm. for you running is at another, you Is that another G1 there? Uh, F sharp, so we went to the leading tone mm. Oh, we're in B We're in B right now, this showman medley So he went to the 5 of that chord 5 of that scale with his subharmonic there and F1 Lowest, uh, sorry, F sharp one, the lowest F sharp on the piano. Left behind. Do this one. Awesome. Don't fight it, it's coming for you, running at you. It's only this moment, don't care what comes after. Y'all see the dream, can't you see it's getting closer? There's something breaking at the break of every wall, it's holding all that you know. So tell me, do you want to go? That was probably, this song is probably, it's ringing bells, you know, like I said, I, I'm not super familiar with the soundtrack. This one definitely is one I've heard a few times. Um, probably my favorite off the soundtrack. Just fantastic. What I made that face for was because I, I think it's it's such a cool video editing effect to do where it's like they're all, they're like these little toy figurines singing inside this little music box. That is 
so creative and I'm trying to think of if I've ever seen that before. But it definitely it definitely caught my attention as something that is pretty novel. And I if I have seen it before, I obviously haven't seen it a bunch because it's like pretty surprising. So very, very cool video editing on their part. Also, of course, the costumes are are spot on. Voice play always nails the costumes and you, you got to love that. I think of what the world could be A vision of the world I see A million dreams is all it's gonna So hi A there from Cesar. Very nice. And you know this style of singing It's kind of again straddling that line between pop singing and modern musical theater and really the two are similar in a lot of ways. Um, we're getting very pure tones. We're getting a lot of very belt-like qualities in the top of these ranges, especially for the tenors and for Rachel. You know, we don't get that as much from Lane, which is, it's actually nice to hear Lane doing a bit of soloing on this track. Um, usually he's only perk, and of course he is also doing perk uh, here, vocal percussion, beatboxing, but it's nice to hear him jump in for a few solo lines there. And Jeff, of course, is on the bass, so we're not getting we're not getting any of that pop musical theater belting out of Jeff because Jeff's, for at least for the moment, just covering the bass line, and that's just totally not the style in which you sing a bass line. But for the solos, it's this pop, this pop singing, this pop genre, like just pop music slash uh, musical theater style belting, where it's a very pure tone, it's very forward, it's very bright. Um, and it's it's very ringy, you know. It doesn't have a lot of like backspace like you would have if you were singing, in um, cl with classical technique and in an operatic fashion. Um, so just to comment on that, but it's very pure. It's very fitting. I mean, that is how the music was done in the original. So I think it makes sense that they are sticking to that. Um, but I mean, really, these singers. I'm trying to remember who was on, who was in the original cast, but like. The people in the original cast, I think, were most, it's people like Hugh Jackman who are primarily, you know, Hollywood stars, but who also, ha like, have musical theater training and can sing pretty well. Um, but, like, these, like, voice plays, like, real professional top-notch singers. So it's really, they're kind of taking the original songs and, in some ways, just singing them better. Singing them with more technique, more power, more, more for the goal of really showcasing strong vocals as opposed to, you know, the movie, which is a whole, that, the movie itself, even though it's a musical movie, is a whole different genre from this here, what voice play's doing. So it's nice to hear that. It's nice to hear, you know, these singers take this music that we've already heard with good singing and then do it with great singing, you know. So I, I, it's fantastic. It's For the world we're gonna come make. alive, come alive, go and write your life, let it burn so bright, reaching up, reaching up to the sky. That was a really interesting first pitch in the bass, I think. It burns so bright, reaching up. Dum, dum, dum. Where is that like in but it almost sounds like it's a quarter tone off. Go and write your life, let it burn so bright, reaching So it's a... Interesting, so okay, so it's a dominant 7 off, or a flat 7 off. From there, I guess they're in D major now. D major. Um, but it sounded like... I'm going to go back and just listen one more time because it sounds like that note is out of whatever chord the rest of the group is on. So it sounds very funky just for a split second. Come alive, come alive, go and write your life, let it burn so bright, reaching up. Yeah, I, I think they were... So I think they were just kind of hanging out in D major, the rest of them. And then Jeff comes in. So it's just a little bit of a clash there between the moving voice parts in in D major and then that dominant seven coming in, um, which then just results and then goes back. Then he lands back down on the D. Very, very interesting. Very cool line there. 
to the sky And it's open wide You're electrified When the world becomes a fantasy and you Another cool, another cool bass note So that's gotta be a, what, a B flat? Yeah, I could, I could feel it You know, that right there In D major, if you go to B flat major That is the start of It's the best cadence ever Aeolian cadence, Aeolian cadence. When it would go like this. Let me find it. <sighs> Love it every single time. They didn't do that here, but you did hear Jeff hit that B flat. So you can see how it could lead into that if they built it off Jeff's B flat and then went upwards. Oh man. You can never, you can't have too many of them. I just, they're, they're great, every single time. And it's open wide, you're electrified. When the world becomes a fantasy, and you're more than you could ever be, cause you're dreaming with your eyes wide open. Oh. And we know we can go back again to the world that we were living in, cause you're dreaming with your eyes wide open. So come alive. Mm. Oh, okay, there's a lot happening. First of all, I love Jeff. He's got like that really like, like just, he's like, he's like barely touching the bass. You know, he's like barely touching it. And then we've got some awesome riffing going on from Eli, uh, Ellie there, excuse me. Some great, uh, one, one big riff from Ellie there. And some crazy cool perk. I, I wish I could, there's a, there's a snare sound effect that I can't do. I don't know how to do it, but you use the side of your mouth. And it's like a, it's like a, it almost sounds like if you put a bunch of overdrive or saturation or distortion on a snare and it like has that like crackly feel to it. I think that's what Lane's doing. It's a, it's a tough style of snare to learn how to do. I never learned how to do that in my minimal beatboxing package that I use for my stuff and used back in college when I used to, when I used to beatbox in a group. Um, it's, I can't, I don't know the name of it, but listen to that snare. It's like a snare with a bunch of extra like crackle and distortion. So part of that's the editing, but also that is a real snare sound effect that beatboxers do. And I think is what is being implemented right now. Live, live. Obviously too high for me, but nicely done in Ellie's voice. What are all these sound effects? This is crazy. Who's doing that? Is that Lane or is that Cesar? They're like all doing, even Ellie was doing, they were all doing like some kind of beatboxing sound effect during that breakdown. Not all of them, sorry. Cesar, Ellie, and Lane were all doing some kind of beatboxing sound effect. And it was coming together to be like this kind of like mishmash breakdown section, think like trashing the camp from Tarzan, you know? <laughs> when the gorillas are all, all and the elephant are all, they're playing like various like instruments in the camp, like scientific instruments and stuff. That's a great, go look up trashing the camp from Tarzan. It's the best thing ever. But that's kind of the vibe I'm getting there. So come alive. They are all doing something. Rachel was doing something, and Jeff was. They're all doing some kind of beatboxing sound effect there. Then we did just get a some kind of like high, um, what do you call it? like a desk camp thing coming from Rachel there as well. So there's, all, I mean, of course, there's like a bunch of layers of tracks happening right here. It's not, it's not just five in most cases. There's usually more happening in the in a in like a in the studio version. <laughs> Nice, so that was cool. First of all, Rachel sounds really great in her low chest range. You know, I'm very used to hearing her 
only doing the kind of high belty like powerhouse vocal kind of stuff so it's nice to hear doing a little more like jazzy and like kind of like low low chest voice range a lot more a lot more bass resonance in her voice there and then we have this cool line that jeff starts the solo on and then they all take a few words of it to get through that line it's things like that that make among a myriad of other reasons to make voice play so creative and so interesting it's because they do stuff like that you know they'll take one solo line could easily be sung by one person and they split it up into three four even five people it keeps things fresh verse to verse or section to section in a melody in a medley style piece like this walk through I know you're wondering know why, why Because we're able to be just You and me within yeah. these walls But when we go outside You're gonna wake up and see oh. It was hopeless after all Okay, so ni really nice, you know, that's how Jeff sings. It's very easy. It's not a ton of... Diction, he really focuses most on keeping a nice smooth delivery and, and a forward placement in the mask up here. Um, some people say Jeff can, can get a little too nasal at times, and I do agree. I do agree at, at times he can. But for the most part, it's his style of singing where he really is just going for this smooth delivery where it's not getting chopped up by the diction so much. It's not getting chopped up by you know other impediments to the singing voice. It's just a nice smooth delivery of the line. Which is, I think, a reason why we like listening to Jeff so much. It's a very smooth, calming, warm tone. Um, and then he, so he does this. He goes nice up into his upper middle range, floats a few high notes, and then just goes, and then just drops down to the basement here. We'll see what he went down to. Something in chest. Fancy it was hopeless after A1. A1 in chess for Jeff there. Very nice. Nice. I'm forgetting how much I loved the original music in this movie. It's so good. I need to go back and watch it and listen. Um, that was so much fun. That's you. That's more what we're used to hearing from Rachel. You know that high, that high, powerful belting going on. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Was this the song in the original that was supposedly the world famous opera singer? That was the one thing where I was like, eh, come on, get at least at least try. You know, uh, I, it was like. I can't remember what, what the character's name was, but it's like this world famous opera singer, and then she just sings straight up pop, like not an ounce of of opera anywhere in there. It's like ah, you could have had a real opera singer; that would have been a cool, you know, change of pace in the movie. But again, it's it's a really wonderful song, and I really like the song regardless. Um, I talk about this a lot with Pentatonix, um, with the bass and percussion being on the same page. Here you had this. You know, you had Lane and Jeff, Jeff hitting the bass and Lane hitting that kick. You know, often in a lot of kinds of music, hip hop, trap, dubstep, you name it, you'll have a hard kick. And then what trails this really punchy kick is a is like a subwoofer or some kind of bass hit, um, a sustained bass hit, you know, some kind of synth or a subwoofer or something like that. Um, and so it's really it's really great. And that's exactly what they're doing here is you've got the kick from Lane and then Jeff's sustaining a bass. And, you know, Jeff really can sing down in true, like, real subwoofer territory. Like, he's singing really smooth A1s in chest right now. So, you know, after the editing, editing process is done, it comes out to sound almost inhuman because it's just so low. And with the kick right ahead, this is like a, it's like a pattern we're used to hearing in all sorts of genres. And to hear it done really well in acapella is always like, oh, 
like, wow, that's, you know, that's the goal of acapella, right? Is to sound like instruments. So this sounds like a kick and a subwoofer going. Super cool. Let's just go back. I just want to get a, get a piece of that. And then we'll just hear Rachel rip some high notes because it's awesome. That's from this movie. That's right. I am brave. I am bruised. I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, cause here I come. Okay, B, B, B1. B1 chest. From Jeff. This, for this final section. I think it's almost done. So what a great section. And I, I this is something Voiceplay loves to do. And I've heard other groups to it as do it as well. But Voiceplay does it really well where that they're, for the last segment of a medley, they'll bring back bits and pieces from the songs they've already done. So you can hear in the background here, in these background, the belts, you know, I love it when they do this kind of passing the baton between belting. Like Ellie takes a big riff. And Cesar takes a riff, then Rachel comes with this big, like, virtuosic pattern over top. All the while, you've got Lane and Jeff slamming it home with that kick and bass pattern I was just talking about, that kick subwoofer pattern. Really fantastic. And so while all that's happening, just listen to the background as they've got text. They've got text coming from the previous songs they were just using. I just realized I'm demonstrating a lot. I'm like, traffic signals for the incoming, incoming plane. Incoming musical knowledge bomb. <laughs> you have all of these singers in the background adding text that has already been used previously in the song. Even some melodic passages, you know, some light motifs, one might call it, from the previous songs. Meanwhile, they're they're in the harmonic structure of this of this final section, or I guess penultimate section. Now we have. We're, I think this is going to be a little closing section where they're in this little toy box, and I think that's so creative. Anyway, a lot going on there. A lot to go back and listen to. I think it'd be it'd be interesting to go back and play this section and just listen to each part individually. Listen through it five listen through it five times. It's only 30 seconds long. Listen to what everyone's doing. There's a lot of cool stuff happening there. Except Lane and Jeff. Listen to those two together, because they're like what, meat and potatoes is what people used to call Kevin and Avi. <laughs> they're they're feeling a lot like the meat and potatoes right now. Hey, it's Lane from Voiceplay. Hi, Did you Lane. know that if you're a voice? Wow, guys, that was really, really fun, and I definitely need to go back and listen to the original again because I had forgotten how many absolute bops are on that soundtrack. Let's go watch the movie again. I remember really, really, really enjoying the movie when it came out. What four years ago? Something like that. Really good. So. This is a special week. This will be whenever this one comes out. Um, it'll be a double week. You know, this is one I wanted to do extra. Occasionally, like I said, when I have time, I will try to do a second one if something new comes out. And for the other ones, it's mostly suggestions, suggestions that have been building up or things that I've wanted to, to talk about for a while. So this will be a second one. So that whenever this drops, it will be the second. It'll make it a special week for the reaction videos. Um, guys. Official may the base be with you sweatshirts links will be in the description below to all our merchandise Oh, ba base gang merch base. Uh, it's in a drawer. I will show you guys on, a, on another video 
or when, when we do the, with the uh, official announcement. Please like and subscribe. Please consider joining my Patreon family. We'd be so happy to have you, of course. And um, I've got some cool stuff coming out. I, I, I will have mentioned this in a previous video, but I have a cover of Other Side by Avi Kaplan coming out, a cappella cover. Um, I have some very thick D1 subharmonics, uh, which I'm very proud of. Marwan Amon did the editing for the audio and is doing the editing for the video. So it's no, you know it's going to be nice. It's going to be nicer than any video I can make, that's for sure. Um, I'm offloading a lot of my stuff to him because he's a very talented young guy and he's very trustworthy. And um, yeah, I, I trust him to make a final product that I'll be super happy and, and proud of. And of course, we're in... We're in collaboration with that. So that's coming out at the end of the at the end of the month, the other side cover. And then I have a, a crazy, crazy cover of Enemy by Imagine Dragons, the theme for Arcane, which is one of the best shows ever made. Ten out of ten, go watch it right now. And it um it is like half a cappella bass singer stuff and half dubstep. And I don't mean a cappella dubstep, I mean real EDM hard hitting dubstep because that's actually what I used to make. Before I got into acapella, I was a I was a a real EDM dubstep producer, and actually that's what I thought I wanted to do with my life for for a while until I shifted shifted paths to opera late during my undergrad. But I produced tons of electronic music, DJed weddings and parties and other other stuff like that. Um, it's a past life of mine that I miss dearly, and it it's been so fun to dive back into that. And put some wicked wobbles and combine that with all this bass singer stuff. It's a very it's it's a project I couldn't be more proud of. I literally finished the audio for that today. Today. Today is what day is it today? January 2nd is when I'm recording this. Finished it today. Um, so that'll hopefully come out maybe February or so. Um, I do have some more announcements, but I'm gonna cut off now, save them for the next video. Guys, thanks so much for joining. Hope you enjoyed my commentary and analysis, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.